Welcome back to Undying Winds. This is session number 20, and uh, this will be entitled Choir of Blades. Uh, the um, thrust of last session, the group had followed uh, what they assumed to be some sort of stone giant or stone construct into the sewers, and they learned that it was a very massive goliath in dwarven armor and a huge sword and what appeared to be the dream shard attached to the hilt of his blade. Um, they engaged this individual in combat, um, and he seemed to possess abilities that were specifically key to rendering the weapons that they've basically leaned upon um, for some time um, inert. Um, this caused a little bit of despair in the group, um, and after a very strange exchange with the darkness, uh, Ren uh, came to realize that uh, his former mentor in the Mardigan uh, family appeared from the shadows um, and stabbed him in the stomach with a very strange uh, but very familiar looking blade. Um, then the uh, tabaxi uh, rogue named Shadow, his mentor, uh, and the massive um, uh, giant kin um, exited the scene uh, via a gate. And that's where we left off. Uh, at the beginning of this session, um, those of you around uh, see the fight has concluded and uh, Ren does lay on the ground near a pillar at the foot of some steps uh, bleeding out from a very serious and grievous wound in his stomach. Uh, the scene kind of um, you know, lingers with everyone kind of rushing over to him. And, well, know, fuck! Gilbert getting ready to cast healing spells. Um, but that's not where we're starting in the material plane. I'd rather start inside of Ren's head. So, you see darkness all around you, um, but you also see that the darkness is broken up by s breaches um, of light. These breaches of light appear to be very crack-like, or like slivers of um, uh, light kind of peering through. It's almost as if the darkness that surrounds you is like a curtain that's been laid over something brighter, something more beyond, and someone's cut holes or stabbed and slashed holes in this curtain to allow the positivity to breed through. Um, but it doesn't seem to get close enough to you to touch you. It's just out of reach. And no matter how you kind of move in this space, you seem to be far, far away from it. And then you feel like there's something manifesting beneath you, like stone or solid ground. And you feel it kind of rest underneath your feet, which you thought were horizontal to you, but now you appear to be standing vertically upon this plane. It seems bleak, like there's nothing for you here. Uh, you can just barely hear the voices of your friends as they get around you trying to, assumably, resuscitate you. Um, not sure as to what's happened here, or maybe their efforts are failing. And then out of nowhere, you feel a grasp just take over your entire face and brain and push you down into the ground. When you kind of start to realize what's happening, you feel like all of the air has been kind of knocked out of you, but then you feel like that's not even a thing that matters when this hand or this force relinquishes its grip on your head and kind of leads you to the ground. You see kind of standing, towering over you, a massive humanoid figure with just alabaster skin, um, strange golden gauntlets on his hands. He has a very angelic looking face features, but where there should be wings on this angelic frame, all you see are broken off stumps bleeding. It looks to you, or they look to you rather stare down at you. You were given a choice. You made your choice. This is where you linger. You think because you are an elf you are going to live eternally. You are wrong. You are still mortal. This is your hell. They start to step away from you, moving towards the edge of this ground. You start to realize that it floats on its own in this darkness, this small moat of earth 
that you're now relaxing or rather um, laying upon. Table's yours. Can I get up? Yeah. You start to stand. I look I look down at myself where the wound was. Sure. Um, you do see the wound is still present, um, but on this end of it, it appears to be a glowing bright with white light. And it seems to be leaking out this light into the darkness around you. I guess I put my hand over top of it, try to staunch the wound. Is that possible? <laughs> The uh, angelic creature uh, laughs in response. Uh, it's back turned to you, or they're back turned to you, and they turn about to face you. Uh, looking down at you, they say, It's far too late. The connections have already been severed, and new ones have formed when you've entered into this place. <laughs> you made your choice. I suppose now that you're here to linger forever you'll know what you've wrought. What your decision has allowed for me to do. Tell me. Duran wanted all of the action with these souls. He's allowed others to migrate into the material plane. I have not seen the sky of Urs for thousands of years. And now through your eyes I can. If they do bring you back to life, I'm coming with you. In the sword? <laughs> no. I do not need a sword. I desire a vessel. You shall be it. I do not exactly fancy an elvish frail frame. But I'll make do. Do I still have my belongings with you? You appear to, yes. I draw my sword. Okay. As you reach for the uh, hilt of your sword and grab it and start to pull it out, uh, you realize that the blade is backwards. So instead of the sharp end being on the outside of the curve of the um, the wagazashi, it's instead on the interior of the blade. And he starts laughing. <laughs> Wield it. Swing it against me. Show me your pride. Show me your ferocity. I drop the sword and jump at him to claw. All right. As you start to rush towards him, your arms splinter back and your hands reverse on your own wrists, and you start to tear at your own face. Oh, um, so you bad. feel the pain, and he kind of just <laughs> and just pushes his hand as you slowly slide away on the earth, as if the ground underneath you was kind of rolling, roiling to move you back and away from him. So this seems fun. <laughs> I cannot wait for you to try and solve all of your problems with malice. It is exactly the vessel I desired. You can start to hear the uh, prayers to um, Dim um, come through the, uh, the veil start to pierce out through it, as I presume Gilbert is readying a spell to cure you. You hear your favorite team member there. Flip back to the material plane. Uh, Gilbert, you're casting Cure Wounds on him, and he, he does appear to be dying, not dead. Do you cast Cure Wounds Good. upon him? Yes. Okay. The I second the spell initiates, you watch the positive energy kind of go into the wound, and just kind of get consumed inside of like this bubbling mass of blood um, where his stomach, uh, like at his stomach level. It should have worked, but it doesn't seem to have. Switching back to the opposite side of the world, uh, into the, the hell, if you will, the creature kind of turns to look to you again, it turns about, looks back out to the shadow. You see a moat of, uh, white energy appear in the sky, a new one, um, that seems to be kind of circular in shape. The uh, angelic creature turns to you and they say, So, you've made your choice. You've sacrificed yourself. How committed are you to it? 
Do you want to live? As your vessel? No. It, it seems your body is fighting to stay dead. Let him heal you. Or not. As your vessel. Are you going to let him heal you or not? No. Not with you along for the ride. <laughs> So then, we stay here together, and you suffer in this way eternally? Fuck off. <laughs> you, you say that in arrogance, and you watch his hand kind of raise up. Do you and know? I'm not saying it in arrogance. Oh, I mean, to be fair. <laughs> you kind of I'm are. saying it in fear Defiance. and desperation. Okay, that's, that's, sure. a, okay, that's better. That's that. That's a good point, emotionally. He um, raises his hand, the golden gauntleted hand, and kind of closes his fingers. As he does so, you feel every single bone in your body splinter. <laughs> Stay with me forever, then. <laughs> and you start to feel every single part of your body just ache in agony. Stay with me forever, then. <laughs> We can have such fun. <laughs> what do you do in response? Again, try and mentally picture where your character is and the agony that he's feeling. If you feel you want to make like a willpower save to kind of, or wisdom save to kind of determine whether your mind is cracking in madness or not, um, you can make that choice. But again, I'm not forcing you to do so yet. Um, no, I, I mean, I definitely would want to keep my sanity. I guess I would want to try to have the willpower to resist the temptation to be brought back. To it feels like more healing is being put into you. It feels like there is the offer for that resuscitation. Like you could be brought back to hell. It just feels like there's a choice inside of you to decide whether or not you want to be brought back. Or Do you I get the to. sense that he's really going to inhabit me and I'll be possessed with my evil spirit? The only thing that you're feeling right now is absolute agony as every single part of your body is being wrenched apart. You watch as the weapon that you drew upon him and then dropped is basically slowly coming back to you um, and slowly dissecting away parts of you, causing you absolute agony. Your own weapon betraying you. Agony. Here I am showing loyalty to my friends. Okay. You continue to do so. You are going to I try. To, you're, you're, basically, what I'm saying is, is you have the opportunity to accept the healing and go back into the material world, or and, and escape this hell, uh, because Gilbert is trying to save you, or <clears throat> you're sacrificing yourself. You are willing to die at this point and stay in this hell eternally so your friends don't have to deal with this curse that's what i'll do all right as the weapon starts to cut into you a little bit sure take the cowardly noble way out <laughs> as the weapon starts to cut into you a little bit you kind of close your eyes a single tear kind of dripping out from it as you realize that the the choice that needs to be made at this moment is the choice that your role in this is is this this is where you end, and the rest of your group hopefully has to make similar choices and defeat their sins as well. You see the blade kind of revert back into its normal position where the blade is on the outside. And then you see a golden hand kind of reach out and grasp it. But you also notice that your hand is grasping it as well. You feel the pain kind of subside. And as you stand up and look over your shoulder at this golden hand, you see Biako Seishan Saveda standing over you. Good. Continue this. You are worthless. Only the cause is important. He looks to the uh, angel. The angel looks to him, kind of annoyed. Expected. Nothing I wouldn't foresee. Biako Seishan Saveda grins. Not this time. I bested you once before, Balbareth. I'll continue to do it for eternity. The two of you black out. 
Gilbert, healing, healing, healing. She dumped three levels worth of spell, or three big level spells into him. Um, and eventually, you see the wound just become bright light, which kind of makes you back up for a second, and then shut. And Ren, you are returned to consciousness with a single hit point. Ooh, yes! Okay, I didn't think that That's was gonna happen. That's the bingo! <laughs> As you guys are standing there and seeing this happen, Bianco's spirit kind of was present, but was kind of like in this weird meditative state. And everyone else's spirits start to move out onto the ice circle and stand at specific points. Um, once Bianco kind of opens his eyes and sees Ren's eyes open, he starts to walk out to the ice as well and stand at pretty much a set position, you'd presume. You then start to see other spirits manifest on the ice. Total of 13. Should be on the map now. Yes. You see Ser Yadva to the northmost, standing alongside Hawk of Stormloft, standing next to an individual you've never met and never seen before. Long, scruffy hair, um, a mage's costume, uh, but very um, flamboyant and styling. Pockets, of course. <laughs> Kolgar Blaze Hatchet. Byako Seishan Subeta. Rod and Fear. Who stands next to a dragonborn. Whose spirit and aura appears to be very red. Um, standing next to what appears to be some sort of goblinoid. Um, who just appears to be very sad and forlorn. Who stands next to an elf who is very much the uh, uh, epitome of an elvish duelist or master of the sword who stands next to a one-armed um, uh, kenku or crow folk um, looks like the arm has been gnawed off or torn off by more feral means um, and on the finality of this half circle you see Cardiff standing there they look to you all kind of slightly saddened, standing around in a half circle around a woman of elvish descent, appears to be a moon elf. Even though she's kind of a greenish specter of her former self, you can tell that her hair is bright red. She stands out in the center of the ice, close to where Grun cracked it. They all kind of look to you. So, I guess I'm. Am I still on the ground? Yeah, you're slowly getting up, and okay. the wound is no longer present, but the pain's obviously still lingering. Like you just had this kind of yo-yo effect where your soul was basically slung into hell and back out. It's gonna leave a mark. More than you know, says the woman in the middle. Feel as if I know. I believe we've met once before, when you purified the Black Blade. Sadly, what you've done here has caused us more problems. However, it is not your sole responsibility or failing. Looks to Valette. What would we do? <laughs> I thought we did a good thing by the evil. Did I take those herbs Calareth like or Calareth Kurgosler was a servant of order. He was not a member of the Grey Order. He was not a member of the True Balance. But he was someone who desired to keep things out of the hands of those who could do terrible things to the world. His methods were in some ways, needlessly obtuse. And he tried to use as much of the old magics as he could, so the new magics could not be learned and easily duplicated by those who would strive for power. Old magics that could be manipulated and distorted were locked away in his black vaults with an, underneath his tower and protected by him. That is, until his rival was given 
his head on a platter. And then his tower was taken, when word that this defense was no longer present. Blet drops to her knees like, like, what have I done? <laughs> Ithel moves her hand kind of just off to the side, and you see twelve small rune stones appear, manifest. They're not real. They appear to be just illusions, um, visuals of these objects. These stones sat inside of the Black Blade for thousands of years, when it was wielded by many of the champions of my goddess, Stasia. The sword then became corrupted and the stones were lost. I felt it was my quest to find the stones and return the sword to its greatness, so that it could be returned to the Grey Order. I fell in my quest. Literally. Twice. However, the stones were taken by a loyal servant of the cause, a young man named Jun, and taken from that place, the ones that were taken by the dragon were returned by his order, the Kengo, and gifted to the mage year of Rostigar to be kept safe and away. If ever it became a necessity to abscond with these items, they would be taken south into the Dragon's Bay and then further south into the Nalanic Ocean to the Sea of Wind and Fire. And they would be destroyed permanently along with the one who bore them to that place. There were plans. They were shattered. And now, the connections that you've had and seen and been developing for so long, you see Biako kind of pridefully kind of look over to um, Ren. Well, now the choir is doubled in size. And as she says that, you start to see shadows manifest opposite them in the ring. A total of 12. 13. You see? Standing opposite of Cardiff, what appears to be a tiefling wrapped in robes, um, his eyes absolutely dominating. Feels like he wants everything he stares at. A woman. On her right hand, a massive, gigantic gauntlet um, that seems to just kind of linger and then disappear, um, as if it's there, but not really there. Um, next to her, a uh, older man who appears to have the fangs of a vampire um, and the regal bearing of someone ancient and old from an older time. Next to him, a mind player an illithid, with strange appendages attached to the ends of his tentacles. And next to him, a blonde um, Osirian, you presume, who appears to have a very just casual, calm candor. Next to him, a woman that appears to be made from water itself. Um, you presume she's a Ganassi, or a plain touched. Next to her, her, sorry, her, um, you see a man um, in samurai armor, the armor of the uh, lands of the east, the isle of the blue, Dra or the lands of the blue dragon, uh, who carries two swords, and on his belt a very fine looking dagger. Next to him, uh, a half orc or orc, you're not sure, uh, with a massive axe, skull on his uh, brow, like a helmet. It looks like several skulls that appear to be dwarvish tied to his belt. Next to him, a woman with black ink covered hands and a strange looking helmet with a central eye that covers over her face. Next to her, a young woman with daggers and knives, very roguish looking. Uh, next to her, uh, a mass of worms and maggots with a porcelain mask over its face with a bloody handprint 
set over that mask and next to that mass of maggots and worms a man who appears to be a Janaran noble very resplendent in his attire in the center standing across from Ithil is the shadow of Amfrid Rastagar the good king of the kingdom of Rastagar they all kind of have their heads turned towards you but it doesn't appear that there's any entry into this ring however they don't appear to be very corporeal either so walking through this ghost circle wouldn't be too much of a problem just because I never use it enough I'm just going to use divine sense everyone glows um, and everyone glows the same and you also see something very interesting do you start to move towards the group to see it more in detail yes you start to see that every single one of them has happens to be connected to the other so have you ever seen those images of like astrolabes or astro um, like planets moving where they connect points of the uh, um, the positions of the planets to one another it's literally what you're seeing but in a little grid form there are literally ribbons of light when divine sense activates that connect every single one of them to one another what must we do to right this wrong we have done you ask we... Ithel I ask Ithel yeah she says well it was not you who set it all in motion once the stones were taken they were marked the very first of the Esper edges was me the goddess Stasia took over the sword the god Alunusero held his position within it as well the two gods have been at odds with one another for thousands of years we both did not see what folly we had created in this a demon prince the corruptor she looks to Amphrid who's grinning took over the weapon as a whole and granted it strength and power when Amphrid took up the weapon it was a major boon to him but every day he fought back the stories of men will tell you the great deeds of King Amphrid if you knew half of what was going on between him and the sword, you would think that they are leaving out so much, and there's no words or songs that be, could be granted to praise him. And then you came along, and with what power you had, you purified the blade. Sadly, when the stones were taken up, the sword was no longer his. When the dragon gained the rune stones. It was hers to do with as she pleased. She just so happened to ple happened to want Amphrid's soul in the sword. And he'd fought dragons before, but never one like Ashmedea. And so he was bound to that sword and walked away. You rescued him again. And his soul was taken out and replaced but the figment that was left behind wasn't strong enough to keep him at bay she says as she looks at Amphrid again hm. and now here we sit in this choir of souls right so who do we fuck up to solve this problem? You hear pockets. <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> you can't do it that way. It's not just dough. <laughs> it's a lot more complicated now than it ever was before. So who do we fuck up to get him to stop talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot. You're a fucking right prick. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He knows. That was pretty good, John. You see the person next to him go, 
it, it's all right, mate. It's I'm dealing with someone who can't even hear me yet. So at, at least you get a conversation, yeah. Pockets. Yeah, okay, so it's fine. Yes, conversation. That's what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else want to talk to the souls on offer? Come on, I know someone else wants to talk besides the charismatic wizard. <clears throat> Is there any way to mitigate the damage that's now being caused or assist in right, writing this wrong? What, what can we do? Or can we do anything? <laughs> Amphrid laughs. It's no longer a situation of righting wrongs. <laughs> he raises his hand up and you see a mark on his palm. The same mark that was present on the um, the forge, the soul forge before you utilized it. The same mark of the corruptor. It's no longer a one player game. If you want us to stop being around, Find the ones who bear our blades, strike them down, and break their weapons. I assure you, we're planning to do the same with you. Yeah, well, fortunately, we have a lot of quarters to play this game. What does that mean? What are quarters? I'm confused. Pockets. <laughs> this is making stuff up. Oh, silly motherfucker. <laughs> I know I didn't curse this much back when I was alive, but whatever. <laughs> Tim, your character has a foul mouth. You should control that. <laughs> you try being dead for 500 years. You start to pick up some, some naughty words. <laughs> How do we destroy the blades? Is it as simple as just acquiring them and snapping them? In some cases, yes, Ethel says. Kolgar says... With others, it's a lot more work. Lovely. And he seems. How do we fight, fight something that steals the soul from our blades and steals you from our blades itself? <laughs> you see, uh, the the masked figure across from Carter's <clears throat> laugh. Oh, you must be talking about me. <laughs> no, we're talking about the other person that ate the souls of the swords and all that. Cardiff looks back to you. I think You're a his wizard? name's Tommy. Cardiff looks back to you. You're a wizard? He's obviously the one in the shard. The shard that you saw. I'm a wizard part-time and I'm an asshole the other part. Pockets goes, <laughs> I think he's like 18 levels of asshole and maybe like, maybe like two or three of the wizard. Oh, please, you wish I was only 18 levels of asshole, dickwad. I oh, didn't know he was epic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't press the mic if I got a cat. <laughs> she wants to love up on that camera, though. Anyway. Um, Rockstar, what are you searching for? I'm just getting a good look at him all. They all seem to kind of turn and glance at you on occasion. Sayer kind of looks to you. Right, mess you've got us into? Seems that way. If it comes down to single combat, though, I don't think I'll have much problem with him. And points to uh, the one across from her. Um, he appears to be some sort of commander of some sort. Some sort of leader of men. But... He doesn't look like he's too martially prowess to himself. Do you know who he is? Not a clue. A Shuriad who's standing next to Sayer, the uh, one in the uh, um, shawl in the leg, uh, says, That? That's Galen Edthar. 
the hero of the Osser Vale. Heroes, villains, mixing and matching on both sides. <laughs> A very interesting game we have here. I never would have expected the magic of the shard being corrupted like this. I do not think that the other princes are too keenly happy with it, but I suppose I'll play my part. She really wants the camera. <laughs> I mean, you know, she loves to the to mug it. Pension whore. Right? Just how like do, me. How do we locate these false blades and who should any ideas on who should we go after first? <laughs> um Ithel kind of looks to you. It's really a hard game to play at this point. If they want to remain hidden, then they will. She's kind of looking over to um Ujezane, or the, the, the one in the armor. Um, the, uh, yeah, correct, the uh, traditional looking um, armor of Seiryu. If they want to remain hidden, then they will. And they will attack from the shadows. How do we... How do we locate the other wielders of the blades that might not be aware of this yet? To warn them. To help them be ready. I suppose follow what leads you can. You see um, uh, one of the individuals uh, kind of look to you when you say this, the elf with the uh, very swash, or the swordsman type bearing say, huh, they're lost. I don't even think they know where they're at. We can't talk to them yet. They're only just becoming aware of us. Hell, two of them don't even have owners true owners you see the dragonborn kind of look down <sighs> and kind of just you see him kind of breathe out and kind of lightning cackles from uh, the sides of his mouth <sighs> might want to take a breath mint for that one kind of snaps his head to you just saying might help Cardiff kind of looks to you again. I really don't think you understand the gravity of this situation at all, do you? I think it's how he copes with the stress. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. And does the, the greatest Dan laugh that he can do. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I believe we were brought here for a purpose, Ithel says. And Ren, I believe it was through you that we were brought here, but it wasn't by your hand. And then you hear a voice come from the shadows. Oh no! <laughs> of course, it wasn't them that brought you here. It was me. A very interesting tale is played out. And Braskar, you walked around the ring, you looked around, you were keeping an eye out. You thought you had seen the entirety of this room. But coming out from the pillar to the north side, I don't have a token from for it. The, pyramid, the, the fox. This oh, the fox. fox got a creepy ass fox. woman pops out. Um, yeah, and uh, you, you see her. You nailed that voice. <laughs> oh. So, now you see that there are others. That your gift isn't as important as you may have thought it might be, but, well, it's still important to me. What all do of the, you want from us? All the souls are looking at this. I don't want anything from you, no. no right, no. I'm sure you don't want anything from us. That's why you're creepy and trying to manipulate what we do because you don't want anything from us that well, makes total sense just so very rude for you to call me creepy just because i lurk in the dark and come out at very interesting points in time specifically the oh, I... end caps for every single season we've been doing it's very I'm, strange i'm sorry should i, should I not I feel say like your theme music would be a sing song 
<laughs> fucking creepy as hell. Uh, she says, well, fine, I guess that's fine, whatever. But I want you to have conversation. I've brought these individuals to you for this short moment in time for you to learn. You see, she starts walking towards a chariot, kind of looks at her like annoyed. They can't deny you. And she places her hand through him. Through the spirit. Can you? <laughs> no. No, I can't. <laughs> it's so interesting. I think they have to answer every question that you have of them. Walks past the next one in line, the uh, female pirate with the uh, strange hand that keeps manifesting in and out. Looks down at her. Hmm. Looks back to the group. You better take advantage while you have the time. Okay, we'll take advantage, and can you just quit the Morticia Adams routine here? No. It's my whole niche. That's what I do. Right. All right. Quick cut the tent, like, the sorry to cut the tension, but what do we need to know from these people? If we can find out our enemies, like, what should we ask? Well, that literally just grabs everybody up and gets them into a nice big huddle. Ren's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ren, suck it up, and I heal him for 20 points lay on hand. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Also, I'd like to say, John, did you appreciate the Adams Family reference there? I absolutely did. <laughs> I'm just surprised there wasn't more snapping. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> can't have everything in life. Yeah, it's late snaps. If you're gonna have a meme in a game. <laughs> well, I figured it'd also fit in since, like, original characters' enemies were the Atoms. Yeah, no, it, that's that's what I was getting at. <laughs> we had we had a meme going for a while. And it just we did, we did. That was great. Anyway. I miss those days. Gilbert would like to go over and talk to, um... Well, Brandon. uh... So Valette asked a question specifically of uh, the group. So start talking amongst yourselves and kind of figuring out what you're doing. I'm going to start putting stuff up uh, for visual um, aids. So go, go nuts. Talking amongst yourselves real quick. All right. So what are the key things we want to, like, what are key questions to ask of each uh, anti-esper? Who, who is your wielder and where are they at? <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, that yeah. would probably be useful information, yeah. Good one. Uh, well, I think also this wouldn't be one for the uh, S branches, but afterwards, we should ask Ren what he did. Just yeah, as a yeah. thought for future. I think we should ask our S branches if they can un help us unlock the powers of our S branches so we can fight against the evil Asperges. Okay. So it sounds like some of you have direct questions that you want to ask. It doesn't sound like you're from the discussion and also like the pauses that there's really like a, a mentality as to what you're going towards. So to help you out, we're going to do the normal, typical John Dupre, left or right, um, across the screen and ask you if you have a specific one you want to talk to and move from there. But seeing that Andy just had a bit of uh, solo time, I'm gonna go ahead and do it in reverse, and we're gonna start with Zach. Zach, to you, my friend. Rax questions for these, uh, obviously coming from a very unique perspective. Um, what would you like to, who would you like to talk to? I saw Sayer get, like, disappeared in when we tried to use her power, right? Mm -hmm. Then I want to go talk to her and see if what she remembers from that experience. She says to you, um, oh, I remember it, yes. Um, when it happened, it felt like I was being um, held at bay. Like I was being pulled to um, the individual, kind of locked into... Um, their presence it was almost as if there was a well that was pulling me down like a whelming force that was drawing me in 
towards him. Something about the nature of it. The individual next to Sayer, as you ask this question, says, Of course. <laughs> of course it drew you in. Of course I drew you in. I want it. I want everything you have. So is this power only you got there, brother? Or is this something all your other brothers can do, brother? <laughs> I don't think they can. I suppose you can ask them directly, but I know it's mine. And so will your sword. It will be mine. All of these blades will be mine. And I will lay them at the feet of Saad Derlothoth's corpse. And I will ride his body into the heavens. Into the stars. Now you think there's a risk of us using us uh, powers against these people when we're fighting them, lady brother? I think they each have different gifts. From what I can tell, this one next to me is the one who controls that gemstone on the giant's sword. So, I think he speaks correctly when he says it's... I think it has something to do with the sin that he represents. Fair enough. That's kind of all I got. Okay. Matt? Oh, um, oh, go ahead. anything, anything different about you now since that happened? Or are we still good with our powers, Lady Bro? I believe we are different. Not for the worse. For the better. Then that's it. All right. Yeah, John, can you actually come back to me at the end? I yeah. just kind of thinking of... Cool. What to say? Dramatic? Yeah, cool. I will... I will remind you. Kevin. All right. I want to go talk to a couple of shadows, but the first one I'm going to talk to is Raiden. I'm going to move over. Raiden, sure. Raiden, all right. And say... Uh, she's not a god of lightning. She's what? She is not a god of lightning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Raiden. I was, I was confused. Sorry. Um, that's all right. Uh, so what I'm going to ask her is I'm going to say, um, uh, we're, I'm going to have to fight the uh, shadow bridge. And I believe it's, uh, and I point to the one across from her, it's like Matsu Yuzami. Who knows about pronunciation there? Incorrect. But, no. She says, incorrect. I, not Matsu Seiryu Uchizai, no. She says, I believe our opponent in this is that one. And she points to the yeah. uh, one that appears to be made of water, uh, the Ganassi. Uh, okay. Her name is Good. I'm glad I asked you. Anari Rainbrand. Besides that, I know nothing. I've never met her in my life. Okay. Um, for, for dealing with that threat, do you know is there any way I can unlock more powers from the Esper that I currently have? I do not know. I know the powers that you are granted. I am present with you in performing, but um, I do not know how we strengthen ourselves. I do know some of their powers are latent as ours, some of ours. But you and I have grown strong together. And the connections you have with the friends that you have are also growing strong as well. You've done good, but you must not allow yourself to be tempted as much as you have been. More so than anyone else, you have given into the temptation for your own glory, for your own vanity. This could be a problem for us. This could mean something dire for you. Yes, I, I know the temptation is strong and it's because the power is so great and it's I need it often, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with this. That makes Any sense. I would say try and rise above it. Do better without it. Was that a short joke? 
no, I, I apologize, I'm just joking. friend, no. Um, I would say that if you are able to avoid entering dangerous situations or contracts in the future, mayhaps you will not have this problem. Hmm. Well, it's going to be tough because the Shadow S Bridge is going to be coming after me and my friends, so... No, I understand. Right there. But anything that would be untethered to this current conflict, perhaps you should pry it. Try and not make any more um, individuals mad at you, so mad enough that they would be willing to throw an entire army of shadow assassins after you in broad daylight. Point well taken. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Brock Jade, the only one with that request, little blue brother. <laughs> Can you please not try to get me killed? <laughs> she hooked me up. Right. Um, and so he was speaking to... Here we go. Sorry, just wanting to make sure that the uh, correct uh, Esper right. is broadcasting, so that would have been Rod in there. And moving on, Broxgar, you are moving to talk to someone, and who would it be? The orc opposite of my grandfather. The, the uh, orc looking at you the whole time looks like he just wants to lay into you and just cut you to ribbons. Yeah, ask your questions. You filthy fucking beard. What's your name? Kelgar. Dwarf Slasher. Oh, that's that's original. Uh, who... Your king... Who is, he, he, he interrupts. Your king was called Orc Basher. You wish to talk to me of original? What's your name? Something weapon? <laughs> And I don't respond. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, my name is Sexy Weapon. Moving on to. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Do you have something else you want to say? Yeah. Who Who is your wielder, Kelgar? My wielder. In this plane. My wielder. <sighs> he has no name. He is only known as the Slayer. And where is this Slayer now? He is somewhere about in the Otania Rus. Before I was pulled here. All right. Well, thanks. It's good to know. <laughs> Thank hey, you lady, Lady, what's your name? <laughs> you just walk up to the next lady. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, hold on one second here. Let me, uh, so. Show to players. That would be Calgar Dwarf Slasher. And uh, he walks next to uh, Kelgar, and there is a woman who is adorned in kind of wizard's robes, and she has a very strange uh, mask or helmet uh, with a central gemstone round green gemstone or kind of faded shadow gemstone in this case and her hands appear to be covered in ink and she looks to you with her central eye and I'm Jürgen Melvin Deroth, the Rhyme Witch Ooh, that's you look you look pretty fancy Miss Melvin Deroth. you do not no no I don't who uh who is your wielder in this realm? The one who wields the sword I am within is known as Arumi. Arumi Kanzaki. And where might that Aruki be? Arumi. Yeah, yeah, Arumi. I'm oh, sorry. Arumi the Rookie. She's on the border between Parnak and Seiryu. She makes her way here due to the loss of one of her compatriots. An individual was murdered, and he must be replaced. Well, I see Hadrian had his revenge. Gain inspiration, Tim. Who wants inspiration? I already have it. 
<laughs> give, All right, give Andy, it, you get it. Give it to Andy. He did great in saving everybody. Yeah, good job, Andy. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't want to take up all of the time sure. myself. But... Moving to Tim. Um, Kelgar, Mirgan, what special powers do you have? In life or in sword? In sword and blade. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I suppose the um, truest answer I could give you is that I am ferocity embodied the slayer is able to kill thousands if he so desires with his bare fists so yes. in one blow he hits many no no he's hard to take down he is pure How rage your ferocity and... and fury bound into one weapon wrath incarnate when he channels me as I was in life. <laughs> Looks back to the dwarf. I killed millions of your kind. Millions. Not enough. It never was enough. It never would be enough. Your filthy beards. Your pompous arrogance. That's enough. We don't need to hear any more. <laughs> Broxgar, I think he likes you. And as you see him start to kind of resist that, you see... Um, uh, the uh, fox lady kind of go, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> silence, and you see his frame kind of go, and lock. <laughs> Mugen, you as well. What abilities in Blade do you possess? She looks to the fox lady, and then looks to and you. And try to be more specific than your sin. <sighs> I'm a powerful spellcaster. The weapon that is wielded is known as Crimson. Crimson, like Selena, is a dagger. I believe it was once wielded by someone of importance. I am able to channel a lot of my powers and spells through it to aid the wielder. Hm. Arumi is not much of a spellcaster. More. More like. Hmm. An executioner. Style and elegance and grace. It is very strange to be at her side and see the world through her eyes. But together, we are quite potent. I am like the cold death that sweeps down from the mountains. She is like a warm summer breeze. Pushing a tsunami to smash out a city on the coast. And then Follett just looks at the maggoty thing with the mask. And what is your name? Gideon. I'm guess. Gideon? And I'm guessing that Agatha wields you? Or whatever she goes by now. Steiner. Sure. You should know me well. You are me. I was you. You still are. What do you I think? Am not. I... What do you think powers my blood? What do you think powers your body? My form here is what I was in life. Do you think these creatures were so as they appear? Nothing more than vermin that one like you might scrape off their boot? Hm. I fear for you if you truly do fight for the side of good. You could just give in now instead of playing this all out. I think you'll find that the demon princes have all the power here. In fact, the magic that powers your blades is based on their gifts. A reversing of their corruption 
allows you to use them for good. But I tell you this, and I hope you understand it. The blood that flows through your veins, it's not too indifferent from that which flows through these, or did when they lived. If that is the case, I shall fight it to my last breath. And we will enjoy drinking that breath right out of your doll's mouth. Enough of your taunting, though. Where is Agatha now, and what special powers and boons do you give her with the blade? Agatha? She's here. She's watching. In the sewers as we speak? She's in this room as we talk. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Too vague an answer. Please, answer fully. <sighs> The mask kind of shifts inside of the hood. Your shadow. My shadow? Yes. Your shadow. Explain. Is, she's wa is she using magic to see through me? Just like... It the... gestures down to you with its wormy hand at your shadow that's being cast on the ice. Your shadow. I... Oh, oh, this... oh, this... oh. Fight it, Tim. Fight your shadow. I, will... I take out judgment and I stab my shadow. <laughs> okay. It starts shaking its mask. Ugh. You're still being a little too vague. <laughs> um... The uh, the worms kind of the, the the mass of worms kind of just like starts taking on a, a posture of someone sitting, even though it's not. Um, the robe kind of like appearing that way. Uh, the mass kind of shifts to look at you again. When you did what you did in the forge, you created a temporal space that travels with you. Your blood is what is known as vitae. But, unlike normal Vitae, which is born into a body, yours was created from Orbo, a magical substance which nullifies magic. In this purifying rite, the Orbo and the soul stuff was put together to create your Vitae, a method that was developed long ago by me, and bastardized by your creators to allow you to have some semblance of life with your more than likely discarded soul upon the death of your original host that space exists inside of your shadow if you are ever to enter it by a means I cannot decipher however it can be exited much more easily than it can be entered, then you'll find your nemesis there. And I'm guessing space alone. Say that again, you cut out. And I'm guessing that I must face this alone then? Or is there... I if, guess that... If you so wish. But I tell you, my soul is bound to something that was corrupted. Something that was taken out of the hands of the one who you wield. And all of them have fallen to my power. As in life, I was not satisfied with one body. So in death, I am not satisfied with one sword. And so what benefit do you give her? The sentinel what? swords guard Agatha. The former guardians within those blades have been replaced by me. A set of six that... swords. Go ahead. A set of six swords. That's it. Okay. Oh, fun. Uh, and then I'll just pick one person that 
we know isn't connected to any of us most likely and we'll go with uh, uh, well hold on there's a whole andy does andy have any questions yeah. that he wants to do Sam. oh yeah well, go i'd like to point out there's a whole andy and there's a whole matt no i know i know I mean, basically, I was going to do what Joe was and then just force also the ask about their powers. Sure. These are good. So, feel free to take those spots, guys. Yeah, good lines of inquiry. But yeah, if you want to uh, hop in, Andy, if you have any I'm questions. I'm just going to do quick, 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 quick. Okay. So I'm going to stand by Biako and I'm going to say, Biako, give me strength. And then I, wanna I don't need to. Over. I'm going to walk over to Ujijani. Yeah, this individual uh, looks to you. Um, hold on a second. Let me go ahead and pop him. And I forgot to put the shame up real quick. I apologize. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. It's a mass of worms in a cloak with a porcelain mask over its face. Not too hard. If you watched the last series, you'd know him pretty well. Um, and then you said Ujizane? Uh, I would say, right. before he says anything, I would say, a pity shadow. He didn't have the strength to resist you. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do anything to him. I'm gonna let the silence hang for a moment. He doesn't seem affected. I'm gonna spit on the ground and walk away. Alright. Uh, Matt? Right. So... I'm going to walk over actually to the Cardiff man. Cardiff Primus. Right. So I know you're kind of like a wizardly type person, right? If I'm yeah. right. Yep, that's right. <laughs> right. So my main question in all of this is what does this have to do with Umbrio coming back soon? I know that happens like every once in a while and I feel like that's coincidentally falling around the right time uh, mm, it's very interesting that you know about that um, yeah well I'm a very interesting person so I think that the alignments might have importance towards us having some issues if Shadow is empowered and these beings truly happen to be essences of Shadow if Umbreo returns in time with it, they might be empowered during its rise and ascension. If it is seen in the sky, it may prove poor um, time for you to deal with these individuals. Something to keep in mind. Have your records gotten you the exact date of the uh, time it will be in our night sky? Or... It gave me a ballpark of sometime this year, but not really like a specific date. He breaks out uh, away from the ring and starts walking away, like towards you, and says, Come on, let's go ahead and see your notes. Do you have them with you, or are they somewhere else? I literally just pull a piece of paper out of my shoe. All right, the two of you sit not on the ice, because water obviously is a problem. And then uh, you start looking it over, and you can see pockets off in the distance just kind of forlornly, like looking over. <laughs> I, I would like to say, while this is going on, Sam just looks over at Pockets and doesn't say it, but mouths the words, I know more than you. <laughs> so, over the course of uh, uh, the, the, the duration of this, if you have nothing else of interest, Cardiff will literally go over the, the systems with you and basically take your model and basically create a three-dimensional... You, you, you've got a pretty good idea two-dimensionally of how it works. He gives you like a three-dimensional scope of it and then fucks your brain up by making it a four-dimensional scope, literally drawing chronomancer circles and everything, like a huge design pattern on your paperwork showing you the exact dates. And what makes you kind of go, oh, weird, the exact date that it's supposed to basically egg, enter the orbit of Urs and kind of be lingering in the sky above is the exact date that the elves and the king before he died had planned to marry the king's son off to the elven daughter. Good to know. Thank you very much. I'm yep. out of questions. <laughs> okay. That's obviously going to take some time. So you're doing that for right. a while. 
All right. Um, Andy, you got your bit. Zach, anybody else you want to talk to? I'm assuming we all want to talk to each one of them and get their wielder and powers, weaknesses. So sure. not above and beyond that. Okay. Current location. Okay. Well, if anybody wants yeah, to be the... Location. I mean, if anybody wants to be the one... Because obviously the, the, that questioning and also the answering is obviously going to change depending on how it's focused through the prism of the character. So if you want to pass on like asking anybody anything, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But um, who wants to be the one that does it? Not in character, but it wouldn't be Brock. I want to ask an Ari. An Ari? Okay. An Ari, yeah. You're bad at this pronunciation stuff. All right, you walk over yeah. to her. She looks to you. Walk over to her. Blue gnome. Interesting. I'm just pronouncing it the gnome way. <laughs> A, Which is to mess it all up. A blue gnome. Interesting. Yes. Uh, I have some questions for you. Like, I have no choice but wielder? to answer. My wielder. No, it's perfect. <laughs> I know it's perfect. Um, my wielder uh, happens to be an individual named Morgan. What race is Morgan? That we Oh, Mor that pirate woman? Morgan is a human woman. Is it that pirate? Alright. What are your strengths and weaknesses? In life, I was what is known as a sword sage, or um, master of spell and sword. In death... And inside of this sword, I have a certain perfection that I grace my wielder with. You may have your spells and your pick, but the sword rain brand will cut you in two. Deftly and easily. I don't even have to start near you. In fact, it's unfortunate that your friend, and she looks to the box, has brought us all here. Because as you're learning things about us, we're learning things about you. You see Ujizane next to her go, <laughs> I imagine that would be true. So, what type of magics do you use? Does your sword use? Is it the... I know there's like the magic that wizards use and the magic that clerics use. Clerics are like white winds, right? I'm an arcanist. Not a diviner. Not a diviner? Okay. She looks to uh, Ujizane and says something in Seiryujin. And he goes, <laughs> and she goes, Oh, no, 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 no. If that's going to be the case, I'll start casting spells. Please. Speak in the common tongue so they can hear your jives. Or I will cast tongues upon everyone and then we can speak every language. No speaking to one another unless you have been united in life, in the real material plane. Please and thank you. I've allowed a sherry out to slip a couple of times, but no more. So what is Morgan's weakness? She's mortal. Unlike you, who is a spirit, right? Correct. I am perfection. I am the finest blade that you will ever find. And I have the ability to teach those who pick it up how to use it as well and as deadly as I was able to in life. I tell you, if it is as some have said that it will be you versus my wielder and your bitch of a spirit is the one that is brought to bear against me. <laughs> Your gnome head will be rolling and Morgan will be walking free of that fight, untouched. Okay, I didn't ask you about that, but I do want to know, where is Morgan? Where is she? Morgan's right in the city. 
Rastigar? Mm hmm. Excellent, I guess. Is she one of the gang leaders? No. Hmm. Uh. What's her special power? She has me. Okay. I think I'm done with you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to destroying your Esper Edge. But, sure. You know, and I'm sure looking so. forward to watching your head roll as I said. As you said. All right. I'm going to get out of there. <laughs> She's an icy one, guys. Um, all right. Uh, that was uh, Kevin. No, we're not really going in any orders or anything, but if anybody wants to chime in, jump in. I've got my pen and paper out. I'm just looking at the like <laughs> got on to the next. <laughs> Walking around as a, the, the, the stenographer. <laughs> I go. I go to. Uh, I go to the pirate lady. All right. So, what's your name and who wields? Iron and Bonnie. My wielder. I don't care. And you see uh, the fox kind of go, uh oh, oh. And then Bonnie kind of looks to her. Or Anne kind of look, kind of looks to her. Do what you will. Punish me as you will. You cannot force me to speak. I do not care. Well then, if you're not going to play along, then I suppose I will have to be a bit more persuasive with my magics. And she walks over to uh, Anne. Speak only what I will. Answer the mortal's questions, spirit. And she starts kind of moving her fingertips and then speaking this strange tongue, which is a bit weird and guttural. Uh, Anne kind of looks to her, just like annoyed. <sighs> and kind of yawns in her face. You see the other two kind of focusing in on this as it happens. Then the fox closes her hand. Uh, from the spell casting, and her eyes flare yellow, and then Anne kind of like her body discorporates a bit. You can see a look of agony appear on her face, and then she kind of grimaces. Answer the questions. You will do so, correct? Yes, the spirit says. Good. Go ahead, continue your questioning. I apologize for this impertinence, and walks away. So who is your wielder? I am wielded by... Hurry, answer the question. I don't have all day. She keeps gritting her teeth. Um, roll a d20 for me, Tim. Interesting. Uh, the, the face of this individual is just kind of continuing to grimace. You see the gauntlet more manifest on the spirit at this point. It seems that I underestimated you, Iron Anne. Your resilience did come with notation. I did not know it to be as legendary as they had claimed it to be. I apologize, Lady Valette. Not much is going to be gleaned out of this one. I assure you, the others will not be as much of a problem. Real quick, did I ever meet, um, uh, what's her name? Pirate chick that took the horse? Being uh, brave? No. Okay, never mind then. I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, so I'm assuming that her power might have something to do with resisting spells. Hmm. So. As I understand it, the sin that this one covers is sloth. Seeing her so active is very strange, to be sure. Um, but we are dealing with two souls here, not just one. Two souls as in herself and her wielder, or her oh, and... No, no. Very much like the demon prince Ashmedea. 
who is, in effect, two beings unified as one. Iron and Bonnie here, in life, took up a gauntlet, a part of the demon set. It became a part of her, and the two souls conjoined. So we are not dealing with just one essence. Her opposition was very similar in life. He had the spirit of mind to cut his own arm off, though, to ensure that the left gauntlet did not take control. Iron Anne, on the other hand, looking at her in disgust, not so smart. Let's go. And she pulls out her pipe and starts packing the uh, bowl of the pipe and lighting it up as she kind of walks back to her position towards the center. Alright. Uh, we'll just go... Oh, I'll... Since I'm talking to Iron Anne, I'll go to uh, Ashiriad. Where is Stone Child? <laughs> oh, he's entered the hells. I, I look for the fox. And I look for the fox lady. As if, like, is he telling the truth? I believe so. Yes. He is a very powerful cleric. He would have the ability to move from plane to plane. So that is where Shadow lies as well. Indubitably. You on, you on the other side of Iron Anne. What is your name and what do you do? Jiliad Victicus. I'm a vampire. Is that all you want to know? No, I want to know who wields you, where they are, and what powers do you give them? Fair enough, I suppose. I am wielded by the Lich Mage here of Osaria. Um. <laughs> Alright, real quick, Valet just like has this look like, oh shit. <laughs> Might grant him great power in causing despair to those around. I believe in me just telling you who I <laughs> am wielded by. I've caused you quite a bit already, puppet. Yes, I realize what we've done. Of course. And so he is in Osiria, where? <laughs> His tower. He seeks to regain entry into the pyramid. You know about that as well, don't you, puppet? Yes. It is what helped give me some simple freedom <laughs> from the shame. Did it? Did it truly? I guess there's only one way to find out. When I dive into my shadow and sever its head <laughs> and break its blade. <laughs> uh, I hope everything goes well for you. For if you are able to kill your maybe you'll have a chance to meet with me. I think. The last time we met, you weren't as capable in the presence of my master. Yes, I remember. That's enough from you. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> He continues to laugh, and then the fox snaps her fingers and stops. And you, what matter of abomination are you called? Zolspix. What? And who wields you? Zolspix is wielded by no one. So you're currently unclaimed? What? Or do you wield someone else, is what you're saying? I'm currently wielded by no one interesting where are you located then in some tomb <laughs> no 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 in someone's gut who has eaten you I don't know it's been so long since that time <laughs> but there I reside 
Eternally devoured. And yet eternally devouring. And what power would you bestow them if they were to excrete you and wield you? Hunger. Hunger. And how does your hunger take shape? Be more specific. I want it. Just let me taste it. Oh my gosh, he's Disney. I can smell it on you. Just let me devour your souls. Enough, enough. Snaps her fingers and uh, the spirit kind of just walks up again. Going down the line, I guess it's you next. What's your name? You know the drill. I am Alexurian. I wielded the weapon known as the Great Red One hundreds of years ago. It was taken up by an individual named Knopf Rockscale who used it to butcher dragons and um, didn't realize that he was being chained all along the way until finally one day he did. When we came into contest, he took the blade as his own. And now I reside outside of that with the real spirit of oppression. My wielder, if you must know, is the Horde, the mass of giants in Oltania Rus. Who are causing that land so much despair and destruction. They think they are of control of me, but in sooth, I am wielding them. Once I'm done with the Princess of Blood, she will wield me, and she will lead the hordes, and then I will come. I will come for the king. When I come to him, he will take me up. And then I will wield him. And this great city of yours. Do you doubt me? No, I just see the importance in stopping you. Good luck. I wish you the best. I tell you this, though. If it comes to be the case that we meet on the battlefield, and you do defeat me. I have contingencies. Your victory will not last long. What are your contingencies? Tell me about them. Looks over to the fox. I don't think it matters much, so I will tell you. The weapon that I reside within, the scythe, Archean Ansu, is broken up into pieces. It has not been reforged. Each of these pieces are splintered all across the realms. They were broken back when it was believed that the one that I served would be stopped by this effort. The truth of the matter is, is the Great Red One is nothing more than a piece of the weapon that I possess. There are shards in Osiria, in Vendar, Jernaris. I believe there's one or two in Seiryu. I can manifest myself wherever I wish. And I tell you, my focus right now is in Oltania. But it seems that the Great Red One is in Osiria now. And I want it back. Bastard dragon never had the true measure to wield it. Butchering dragons. <laughs> That's elves' work. Killing kings. That's a man's work. And what in shards that you are, what ability do you bestow? I don't grant abilities. I control. You control? Thank you. That's been most enlightening. Sure. 
Not that it does you a lot of good. You next to the shame. Which is on A. I've already been questioned. What other questions do you have? Oh, I was the other side of the shame. Oh, that's way down there. Oh, Gwenvalia? Yeah. I'm Gwenvalia Silverkin. You, you gotta do this one, too, because um, uh, Ren didn't, didn't really talk. He just spit at him. <laughs> yeah, I'm too messy. Oh, good call, good call. Okay. So, go... Yeah, I already did this one, but do this guy. All right. Okay. Matthew Serio, Jizane, Shogun, and Emperor of the province of Serio. Master of the 27 houses. <sighs> Servant of the Blue Dragon. That's very nice. I'm guessing you're in the hells right now with Shadow. Because no. that's where Grun went. No, I'm in a sword. Well, I'm asking that. I'm guessing that's where your sword is. Sure, why not? If not, then please enlighten me. Where are you currently? Where is your wielder? Shadow? I am inside of a sword. And where is Shadow? As you say. And what abilities are you granting Shadow? <laughs> Ask your friend Elf over there. Not specific enough. Please, be more thorough. The weapon is made to destroy him. Interesting. And it was the reason we were brought here together. <laughs> uh, admittance. That weapon for him and only him? Hi. Admittance into this choir, as it was called, is because of me. I'm the greatest among these. You'll find out soon enough. How was it, Elf? We don't need your taunting. No. Shut your lips. It's not taunting. No, 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 no. I, I believe I asked you to be quiet. Genuinely want to know. And she kind of raises her hand. No, 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 no. Silence. And he kind of says, I just want know what was it like to be in his presence and she snaps her fingers and he stops talking hmm Ren if you would like to inquire more after that is that your disposure but if you seek peace I allow you that she kinda, I, I will let you have it as you're kind of moving to the next person she kind of shuffles her robe and kind of pulls out her wrist and you can see that there's like a bracelet with a strange blue orb on it the blue orb seems to have kind of swirling patterns up on it she looks at it do hurry up, we're almost out of time with this affair, please. I will try. Very good. So, Gwenvalia, who wields you? I am Gwenvalia Silverkin. I am wielded by an individual named Seth. I reside within the sword known as Highwind. And where is Seth currently located? Seth is in the kingdom of Stormloft. And what abilities do you grant him? I don't know. We haven't come into much union as of yet. Interesting. As you understand, the stones were just corrupted. You understand what that means, right? That your full corruption hasn't been hasn't taken root yet. Then enlighten me. It means that as it took your blade some time to grow and manifest, it will take theirs as well. The reason why Grun was so readily able to use his weapon is because he knows the soul inside of it. Some of these others are being picked up by people who do not wield them, or do not know them. Others, on the other hand, very much intimate with the weapons and the souls within them already. When the runestones were corrupted, or changed, by Ashmedea, because she knew she would not be able to keep them, it created this process. Some of these people will boast to you. They will tell you 
of their great powers or what they think they might be able to do. It may not be manifest yet. It may be just wishful thinking. Interesting. So when they don't know and they're vague about their powers, it's because they don't know what their powers are. Correct. Why are you so upfront and forthcoming, unlike the others? Do you think everyone in this shackle is evil? Do you think everyone on your side is good? Do you understand there's not a dichotomy here? I think that it happened, I think it's lying along the lines of who overcame their sin and who did not. They may have overcame it in life, but what do they do now? Locked into their blades. So it's possible for your blades to be corrupted. Do you not think it's true that the blades on this end are able to be redeemed? Interesting. If you speak, if that has any air of truth, I would hope to redeem you then. Well, I don't need it. I know what I did in my life. I know that this hell that I've been put to is mine by design and not by happen stance. Happen chance. That's what I wanted. Well, thank you, Gwynvalia. Of course. But I need to be moving along. And as you start to walk towards the last of them, he kind of smiles, and you see the fox say, Time's up! <laughs> I apologize. The choir must end now. I have to have these um, individuals back. And the spirits start to fade away. Go ahead. May I have one question of him, please? One final question. I can't hold them for very long, quickly. <laughs> Where are you located? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you see them all disappear. And he says that if, if you've ever played D&D &D with Jeremy, uh, it's literally Jeremy's voice saying, ha ha ha, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, sorry. I took a little long on some of those, but I got as many as I could. <laughs> Dog is. We got 12. 12, 11. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming Rastigan is uh, Rastigars. So that would be 12. So all of the souls disappear, including the ones on your side, except for the ones that you possess and the two in the middle. Cool, we can ask uh, King Amfred. So, Amfred, or do you go by a different name now? I'm not bound by Little Keeper of Secrets. So, waste your breath if you wish. I care not. You do not wish to taunt us with your overwhelming power and... No point is there in that. Boast? You're mortals. You're not worth... the stuff you're made of. Yeah, he sounds about right on that. Let's just go and kill his son instead. Seems like a fair trade. <laughs> He's a dick to us, we just... Cut off his line. It's not Amfred. It's Durin. <laughs> no. Close. But no. Durin Valkar, do you think he would be bound to a blade? No, no. Oh, no. It's a lot much greater than a meager prince, am I not? Ethel nods her head. You are. <gasps> Your fight isn't with him, by the way. If you can break the other blades, you'll be doing us a great service. If you can free them, those souls, or send them to the hell they deserve, then, only then, can we resume our conversation that was postponed by this dragon. The, uh, King Amber kind of nods his head. Of course. Are you going to keep this form as long as you are, or will you just show yourself to them? Show them for the deceiver that you truly are. No, no. 
she says. You seem to like the look of what you've taken upon yourself. No need scaring these mortals more than they probably already are. Heh. <laughs> Fair enough. The uh, King Amphrit turns to Valette. Here. And throws you, uh, basically you thought he wasn't physically manifest, but he throws you something, and it appears that it's a physical object coming towards you. Uh, Take it, oh. Do you catch it? <laughs> of course he does. It's he a terrible resist. idea. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a ring. You catch it. When you open your palm, it appears to be a gold and silver or platinum band uh, twisted with a kind of sh uh, patterning that's very elvish. Uh, it looks like there is a centerpiece on the ring. Um, it looks like a moon uh, and a sun kind of conjoined with a black umbral uh, like circle, like three pieces. And in the center of the moon, there's an empty gem socket. In the center of the um, uh, in the center of the sun, there is an empty gem socket. And in the center of the black circle, there's a single red ruby. What's this? <laughs> Enjoy. Ithel kind of has a look of horror, and they both vanish at the same time. Oh. The moon is Anastasia? Interesting. He gave you his ring. <laughs> a lot of power you've been granted by a god. But is it power to be used, or power to be I secreted away? I suppose you could do whatever you want with it. I don't really deal much in power, just... <laughs> Lore. I can tell you what it is, unless you want to go about the path of finding out on your own. Oh god. Are no, you... please. Yeah. If you have, let me know. During the Third Age, it came to be that Stasia, the goddess of the moon, entered this place, this realm. She was brought by her conservator, her champion, Thorn Stasia Nottle. When she was brought. She came in seeking this individual known as Alunusuro or Nayonomen, first man. And in him she saw beauty and he gave her a ring. And she gave it to her champion because she knew not what to do with such an object when he needed its power. He simply wished for what he needed. <laughs> the stone set in the moon disappeared. But the wish was corrupted, you see. He did get what he wanted, but the ring was returned to Alunusaro. In the city of Khan, in Osiria, the Dargian Rift. <laughs> so much happened that day. Or so they say. I wouldn't know, it was thousands of years before my birth. Well then, the second time the ring was used was during the signing of the Covenant of the Ascended. It was used to stop an individual, a mortal who was ascended to godhood, from tricking others into doing as he wished, using a very old stone known as the Hierophant Stone. To make them do as he pleased. Ah, uh, an interesting fight, that. And there you have it. There the ring sits in your hand. With the final stone remaining. But any stone, any wish used by this stone gets corrupted in some way. Oh, well, the first one, yes. When it was granted by Alunusro as a gift. The second time, not so much. A bit more beneficial when it was granted as a gift by Stasia, but I suppose, if patterns are to be believed, this last wish would more than likely need to be worded very precisely if it were to be used. I yes. want a ham sandwich! <laughs> a ham sandwich appears, the last stone disappears. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm kidding. It's a ham sandwich of pure evil! Yeah, it's a ham no! And the next, the next uh, story arc, the next 20 sessions will be called The Ham Sandwich. <laughs> nice.
the ham sandwich, of course. And... The ham sandwich of Eve. Samuel. Vlet takes the ring and puts it in the most secure place she might have on her body so that it cannot be easy, easily accessed from her or noticed and basically eat tries it, to ferret it away. Eat it. Eat it. Eat As something it. not to be used. I was thinking, like, you just pooped it. <laughs> puts it in her prison pocket. So now you Dude. see that there is a lot more to this game now because of choices you have made in the pyramid. Do you understand anything more of what we are seeing here? She says that she kind of takes a couple drags off of her pipe. I'm... I don't know, with the freeing of Durham Belcard, I don't know what we could have done differently. It seemed like that was happened by trying to wrest me from the, sh the, the shame. always choices that be, can be had. There's always measures that can be taken. There's always things that can be done. Never, ever, ever assume that anything is inevitable. That is not ever true. You do understand that we live in a nexus of possibility. Every single world tethered to ours. Yes, more so, I do not have the insight so, to figure out what we could have done differently. So, wait a second. You're saying not that saying it's inevitable. You're saying it's inevitable that everything is not inevitable. Of course. That's exactly right. Finally, right. someone. So then everything's she inevitable. Lo she looks at you. She says, finally, someone gets me. Uh. <laughs> I think she's a few sausages short of a hot dog party. Well, he's gonna give you a bunch more buns. It just, how do you buy half a pack? Or even one half, one quarter of a pack? Explain that to me. Tell me how. You steal it. <laughs> That's just a main. I never thought of it. You're brilliant. Yes. <laughs> what is your name? I have not given it. That is why I ask. Do you not wish to give it still? I am so keen on keeping secrets. And you truly haven't given me much so far in the way of favors. So let us work out the current balance of our discussion first. I will not count the book. That one was free. But this whole affair, I think you might agree, has been beneficial to you. Yes, it has. Mm. It has made us aware of things we needed to be aware of and given us purpose in our future tasks. Good. Good, you understand. So, you might want to say thank you in response and perhaps be willing to repay a debt so freely granted. I cannot blindly say that I will do whatever you request, but I am willing to hear out how you wish us to repay it. Yeah, I'd like to say Sam just has raised his eyebrow while, or after looking over the uh, stuff that he worked on with Cardiff. I thank you for this great gift you've given us. What is your request in return? I haven't decided. I don't know yet. There's so much lingering on what has happened here today? So many new faces. So many new implements. You must understand. Seeing it the way I do versus seeing what you have been shown. It really does not match up. It does not hmm. seem to be the same as you see it from your limited perspective. And trying to explain it as well. It would be difficult. Very, very difficult. So, I will come to you with a request. You specifically. 
it would seem that the um, others may not be so keen on paying debts they don't feel they owe. But I'm sure that you will be able to help them understand the purposes of paying back debts. Takes another drag from the um, pipe. Before you go, may I ask for clarification on one thing? Hmm. If you so feel free to give it. I will hear your request. She yawns in your face. <laughs> one of those kind of puppy Agatha. yawns. Yeah. Agatha resides in my shadow. Does she see hmm. and hear everything I see and do? I know as much as you do. It's the first I've heard of it today. I presume she can hear through the portal, though. That would make sense. It would be interesting. If that were true. Hmm. But it definitely means that um, they're aware. However, I don't think privacy is something you have much of anymore. Now that all of the swords are combined and connected. Thank you. Of course. So, we are even. You owe me a favor of my choosing. You can, of course, try to deny it, but moving forward, I would feel that would be rude. <laughs> but you asked another question of me, so we might as well get that out of the way as well. I will grant the information you requested freely. I am Ragdrotha. You asked you only for a name. And maybe on our next meeting I can ask more. You can ask whatever you like now. Understand Do you seek each piece of information comes with a cost of its own. At that <laughs> <laughs> For the audience of the choir of plays one favor. The granting of my name. <laughs> Another request. This conflict uh -huh. has become too interesting. She reaches into her uh, cloak and pulls out an orb and holds it out to you with her gloved hand. She hands out what? Sorry. An orb, like a. Uh, piece of um, glass it looks like a glass orb like david bowie like uh in labyrinth kind of little orb okay i i just go the, to receive it the second you take it into your hand it becomes like a, a peach in your hand like it changes shape consume it pit and all good <laughs> it's gonna regret this but she does it okay good that will be more than enough payment for my name. If any of you who are watching this matter engage or are curious as to what has just transpired, I can now see through her eyes just as the mage here once were able to before her body was changed. If that troubles you, I do not care. It is our agreement. Isn't that right, Belette? I will come back to you with my favor when I have considered it. Obviously, something not the thing I could think of up on the fly. A lot of matters have been engaged within here today. And there are others still that I need to make sure are ready. If you have any other questions, I can think of other favors. But if not, I'll be on my way to my party she looks to the others oh thanks I'm good <laughs> <laughs> she uh, takes a very strong hit from the pipe and you can see that the smoldering green kind of starts billowing out from the top she raises it up and then drags it down so that the smoke kind of cascades in front of her and as she drops it down to the very bottom portion you see that the only thing that remains is the smoke and the uh, pipe, 
and then the pipe turns into the smoke and disappears as it enters into the smoke. Nothing is left besides just a billowing cloud of greenish gray smoke. Wow, that was strange. <laughs> I think it's stranger that you didn't go promising something there, little brew brother. <laughs> I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. I think it's appreciated. <laughs> so, a couple thoughts if you don't mind uh, me sharing. One is that it may be worthwhile to share what powers our Esper Edges have that are associated with our sins, only so that we might be able to better support one another and not seek to indulge in them. Two, going forward, I'm wary of me being in the presence of planning, and if, if I wish to share information, it might be best to avoid any prying eyes or ears, to write it down possibly without looking. Blood's body seizes for a second, and her mouth moves. No, that's all right. You don't have to do that. You can say whatever you like in front of us. And then you return back into control of your body. One second. I gotta look for her name again. Uh, Red Crotha. I am more concerned about what might be seen from my shadow. And you hear a voice in your head. Fair enough. Just... The agreement is, and you can hear this only in your head, the agreement is that the secrets that you have, I know. Understand I'm not a league, in league with them. I'm simply interested. You seem like someone that is more seeking to be entertained than anything else. You've got it right. <laughs> as long as we put on a show, good show, you will be Damn. satisfied. Damn right. <laughs> One hundred percent. So either I don't know if we can deal with Agatha yet, but if we can figure out a way of all of us jumping into my shadow, for I wish not to think I can take her on myself and deal with her sooner might be better than later because it'll free up our plan. My final piece would be, I worry about the bloody Duchess and her possibly falling to corruption. I wish to prevent that at all costs. So my uh, microphone records all the time, not only when I press the button. So if you're watching this at home and are hearing sirens, uh, um, yeah, me too. And I wish they would shut them up. It's really aggravating. It sounds like I'm in a techno. Can you hear it right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was an emergency going off because of uh, stuff Valette had done. It finally stopped. <laughs> but yeah. Wow. It's still ringing in my head, though. It's it stopped, but I can still hear it. Great. So, Valette, you said you were hoping we could share what our sins are? What powers the sins are affording our Esper Edges? Right. I can go first. I, I, yeah, I'll go too, but you go ahead first then. What mine does is, when I've fallen in combat, I can bring myself up to my feet without anyone's assistance. I've only used this once. And though tempted recently, I, I've been seeking not to ever since I have chosen this new path. Yeah, that could, I could see how that would be a huge temptation, and mine is very tempting also. Basically, as my, I heal people during combat, I am gaining healing power in my Esper Edge. And so I was using that when I needed it, but I found out that it's a problem. So it's a... Uh, Who's snoring? Really causing me to be Matt? Is that Matt? Hey, Matt, wake up. Matt. I'm awake. Were you snoring? Sorry. Was I? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> if you need to go. I'm sorry, it's. I'm awake, it I'm awake. Only me. I'm awake. <laughs> no, it, 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 it has been a long week for me. If you need I'm to sorry. go to sleep, go to sleep. No worries. No worries. If you need to go yeah, to sleep, no worries. Go it to sleep. You can't do it on the air. Yeah, man. But if Maybe you... switch to push to talk for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so, anyways, yeah, I'm trying not to use that extra sorry. healing that I get. I love to keep my audience riveted. <laughs> yeah, people are falling asleep. Players are uh, so engaging. Uh, Thanks, right. Somebody else go, I'm done. Or was it because Kevin was talking? <laughs> oh, that's so rude. I love that's you, something Kevin. Sam would say. Yeah. Ren, Ren's power is, is betrayal. Um, mm -hmm. And when he takes damage, he can decide to, take, to give that damage to another, another player. Interesting. I might have used that one once before I understood. Rockscar. What's that? Your sin is fury. Am I or wrath? Am I wrong? No, that's right. I'm here to kill everybody. All, all the bad stuff. What's the problem with that? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Based off against the right. human prince in his own realm, he's like, I'm gonna try and stab him. <laughs> uh, are you asking what the weapon does? If, if you don't wish to share, we cannot force you. Well, it's nothing that I've ever used before, but uh, if if I'm if I'm killing enough of my enemies, then it'll it'll let me kill a, an extra one. Uh, if I hit ten rounds in a row, if I get ten hits. I can bonus action to get a free action to attack again, basically. Nice. But I've never used it. Other than that, you know, the it that I have used the villain's menace, which will allow me to do more damage and hit. That's not sin based, though. Yeah. Better than I have been. To not give in to them. Maybe I should just hit things more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have made that one just attacking the target instead of hitting. That's my own fault. In Brock, what, what sin power does your blade bear? Well, uh... Sword lady brother over there told me not to uh, use it, so I ain't. But uh, this thing here collects, uh, I get like horde, uh, I can hoard points when I hit. And then if I kill him, I can steal a feat from him and keep it for myself. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's so cool, dude. If I can, like, if I get a kill blow on a single creature, I can spend my horde points to steal a singer, single feat from that creature or, to keep until I... Is it also, uh, you can also take a, a recharge ability or am I wrong in that? Uh... Why aren't you using this? It's you a single feature mind. determined by feature. the DM. Feature. Yeah. Yeah. gain a single feature of the creature determined by the dm so it's not necessarily a feat but like right. i could gain water breathing if we're fighting those like water people things or, or he could gain or a, breath or a dragon weapon. you could get lightning breath right. exactly or poison breath whatever it was yeah i well that's like that thank you for following sarah's advice that seems like a very tempting sin not so it is greed, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. That's great. Well, if Sam doesn't have anything to add, then. No, not really. Sin <laughs> <laughs> is snoring. I love you, man. All I can ask Sam is. Bunch of assholes. I implore you. <laughs> To resist whatever temptation that your blade bears. And I stabbed him! 
<laughs> My sin was slot like hit in action. <laughs> he dies. Wait, he said Tim, not Palat. <laughs> well, on the second note, if you wish to plan on our next steps and wish me free from your presence, I'm more than willing to do so so that one of the false Esper edges cannot hear our plans. Why don't we just plan to kill that one first and then then we don't need to worry about that. You hear Hawk's voice behind you say, they can all hear us. Then don't see the worries. Then let them know! Let them know we're coming! All the swords are linked. Is that because of what just transpired? No. The... So they've been linked since the dragon have got the stones. No. They've been linked since. And uh, Hawk looks over to Ren. Since what happened there happened. That's very descriptive of you. What did happen, Ren? Informed. I. He kind of. Um, you, you see Hawk kind of like lean down when, he, when that question is asked. And kind of look to Ren like a bit concerned. Um, and then Biako kind of steps forward um, from seemingly nowhere and says, um, None of your concern, dwarf. What matters? Oh, okay. What matters? Why would, I don't understand why he would want to keep that. Never what matter? Well, he, he says it. And then what he says after that is, What is of our concern is that. Shadow, with that weapon, forced themselves into this network of souls. And with that weapon, which was created in the same way that these weapons were created, except in a negative fashion, has been able to make a larger network of these weapons. And that's the important part. It looks to Shadow. Or, sorry, it looks to Ren. Oh, you're not Shadow. <laughs> looks to Ren with kind of a, a jerk now. concerned look. So, um, if I could talk to Biako, I would say, does that mean that all of the, the shadow espers can do special damage to their opposite? I presume the same is true in the um, other direction as well. So, Yaku, they can hear and see, but do they know our thoughts? No. Well, why don't we just put them aside in a different room when we're talking on our plan, and then just go back to the room and grab them, because I'm imagining their souls are somehow attached to the Esper Edge. Um, as you're kind of muttering that, Rodden kind of looks down um, from... Uh, her position, kind of walks over to um, Gilbert, places her hand on Gilbert's wrist, kneeling down to do so, and then says, throw it. Throw it aside. I'm going to guess, Gilbert, they're attached by more than just, you know, the weapon. She looks at the, the gnome. Okay. Do it. I'll go, I'll go and, like, place it in the corner of the room. And walk away? And then walk away. She the stands up. Bar from her position as she kind of like was kneeling down to talk to you and looks to uh, Bilet. Through your eyes, see what I'm talking about, seeing what I'm concerned about. Do it. Sense it. I use Divine Sense. You see the tethers. You still see the connections. The ones that are black and the ones that are um, uh, Esper edges that kind of tether off to somewhere else seem to kind of just stream out in a direction and kind of dissipate. But you feel like you can get directionality off of that. That's cool as shit. Nice! Like some sort of dowsing effect. So mine's okay. going directly into my shadow? Yeah. But what you notice is is that this they're not connected to the, the weapons. They seem to be connected to the people. So Gilbert 
has a tether to his weapon, but the tether's out from it. Like what I mean to say is, is Gilbert's connected to the, the to Crane Beak, and the Crane Beak is connected to everything else. Mm -hmm. So if we were to Radden, so you hear through the weapons then? Everything that is spoken around me, I can hear it. I don't know if it's the same for others. A couple of them kind of nod. It's the same. So as long as we place our blades in a separate room, we might be able to plan without them knowing. Some of it, at least. Perhaps. And then well, that would also satisfy Redcroft's curiosity. Uh, I assume that since I can still hear Gilbert they would be able to hear what I hear. Right. If they can't hear our thoughts, we just have Sam use telepathic chat. Whatever yes. it is. Murray's telepathic bond. Yeah. Problem solved. It's fine. Corey, we could write notes if we had to. Just go in the corner and don't look. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some plans of what we can do, but but I don't want to say them. I'll I'll uh, write them down to you guys or something. Write your little notes. Well, all we need to do is give Sam ten minutes and yeah, be able to communicate telepathic like we did before. Right. That'll work too. Hmm. The, uh, so well, hold on. God. The, the, the notion that you're standing around in a sewer on a block of melting sewage um, immediately kind of just like hits you all like a ton of bricks. Uh huh. Yeah. I was, yeah. That's what I was going to do next. In the meantime, why don't we head from this foul stenched place and head back to your place, Gilbert, for nice baths? Sounds like a great idea. What up? Uh, sorry. Uh, you. The common's a new tongue for me. This word, bath. Hot yeah, I water? don't know what they're talking about either. It seems crazy. We know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> I've only taken them in as much as that they help mask other scents on me from what I've been told in the past. But I'm looking forward to experiencing what luxury they may offer. You won't be disappointed. A good bath makes you feel great. You start to head out of the sewers. Are you going backtracking the way that you came to exit out in Spellmoth? Or are you going to try and find a point of egress uh, in and around these parts? Let's clean these sewers out, guys. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, who would know the sewers best? Where are we exactly? Sam? Yeah, why would Sam be in the sores? But where are we? Are we in... Um, are, are that we was an idealist thing? thing. It is a bit of an idealist thing, yeah. Yeah, I have the urban was. bounty hunter thing. Does that help? So, if you're wanting to go out somewhere besides the way you came in, um, I would just require a survival check from either uh, Matt or from um, Andy. Would my wanderer feet help with that? Not so much. This is a bit okay. of an urban setting, yeah. That's, That's a 10. Alright. And Andy? May I check as well? I suppose so, yeah. Bomber. What'd you get? You got an 8. Oh, okay. Eight. So, you guys kind of move about trying to find out where to go and um, uh, not using the map that you were on but kind of moving about you end up kind of lost um, something that keeps on becoming a recurring theme though is it seems that there are a lot of kuatoa in the sewers that seem to be kind of tracking you about but not assaulting you odd Okay, so after Do the you... course of about... Oh. oh, go ahead. I was going to say, is it odd that they do not attack? Is it 
possible we may be able to bargain with them? Yeah, I try to ask the fish how we get out of here. I mean, through magical means, I'm sure anything is possible. <laughs> Everyone's head turns to Sam. <laughs> I mean, if you give me ten minutes, we can psychically communicate with them. If they're within range. Do you need to know the same language to communicate with that spell? You do not need to know the same language. You just need to be close enough to count them in the thing. It's... What is the range? 30 feet. You need to be within 30 feet of me. You want me to grab one? Yeah, sure. Let me try to find them to try to... Like, like find my way out of here. I'm pretty good at uh, that type of stuff. All right, I'm gonna go do some hand fishing. Stick Going your fist in the water. Yeah, you got it. Just like, just like catfish. So get underneath there, grab the fucking mouth, and pull them up. They, Hopefully it's not a stopping turtle. They definitely <laughs> seem to be very wary of you. So any emotions or noticing of them, they just kind of book it the fuck out. And they seem to have some sort of supernatural sense of, like, your movements. You think that you're in shadows or you're trying to remain hidden, but it seems like they always have a beat of where you're located. Almost as if they're able to see you in a different light than you think that you can be seen. Um, any methods to try and get to that um, don't terribly work. Um, you cast a spell, you grab a hold of one. Well, hold on. Hold on. I was actually trying to see what the thing was. Oh, okay. What the range was of that thing. Sure. But I mean, yeah, if it works, I'll use it. Um, it, it, ranges. it manages to grab a hold of one, but it seems to very, very quickly nimble, uh, slip, slip right out of that grasp, um, almost as if it has kind of a innate nature of getting out of grapples and graspinesses, like it's a slippery little guy to get a hold of. They don't seem to take too much of an offense to it, and they kind of back away for a time. You don't see them. And then after a fashion, they return to back to looking at you, keeping an eye on you. Finally, after about four hours of walking around, uh, you manage to find a point of exit. And when you come out, you feel like you are in uh, Spellmoth still. And the sewer grate that you're exiting out of is just near Ren's shop. Ren's old place of business. Looks like all the signage is still up on it, and it's still locked up. I'm gonna unlock that thing. Bunch of boards and a bunch of signage saying don't come in, conglomerate, da 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 da, da like last time. Too bad. Alright. Breaking in, huh? Yeah. Okay. You, um, need to. Are the others going to follow Ren in that process or are you doing your own thing? I'm not the others, not you. Um, so wait, the door is locked? It's barred. The entire building is, or the, the office building, or the office portion of the building has been kind of sealed off by a conglomerate. And Ren wants to get inside? That's the case. And do I remember the office building that well? Pretty well, yeah. Okay, hey, Ren. The two of you vanish from the street and appear inside of the building. Um, upon entering into the building, um, you hear kind of a silent alarm just trigger once. Um, seems like a spell has been breached upon your entry into the, um, the space. But you look around the office and it looks like a fine layer of dust is kind of gathered on everything. About a week or so's worth of dust. And, Whatever uh, you're doing, do it quick. It's Anything I notice that seems out of place. Um, the only thing that's new to you is, is stack of mail. Grab it and go. Okay. Alright, I grab him and use the other right. fourth level spell I have to teleport us out. Sure. And you guys wander. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm giving us a sizable distance from his shack. Okay. And then the other people don't stand there right on the street. They start to make their way. Are you guys making your way back to House Kirk Osler? If so, are you doing so on foot, by um, trolley, or by uh, Skyrail? Uh, let's go Skyrail, guys. Is not the most expensive one? 
Mm-hmm. And the one that gives you subliminal messages. If you're going Skyrail method, um, it'll be um, a total of uh, three gold for the total group of you. And uh, it's a very quick trip. Doesn't take too terribly long. It. But it is night out at this point. And by the time you get back home, it's very late in the evening. Um, looks like House Kirk Osler is pretty much quiet, except for uh, the guards that you can see present and posted. And um, kind of start making your way there. Is the tower still there? Tower's still there. Oh, man. I forgot about that. <laughs> All I was thinking about was a nice bath. And, uh, yeah, you guys head in. Um, anything else you want to do before you take a long rest? It's been a long day, a long stinky day. Probably some baths are in order. Herbal essence commercial, man. Yep. I'm enjoying my first ever feeling bath. Yep. Um, I am actually going to look through Gilbert's library for anything possibly even tangentially related to whatever, or to all the stuff that, um, I went over with Cardiff. Okay. I will consider it to be kind of um, impossible to find any information in uh, Gilbert's library about the stuff you went over with Cardiff. That might be more yeah, of a... Yeah, I kind of figured it, but worth a shot. Might be more of a tall memory uh, stop and visit for that stuff. Definitely looks legit, but it just kind of sculpts your idea from what you had before from a vague premise to an exact date and time. Right. Um, that said, uh, anybody else have anything they want to do before they go to sleep? All right. You sleep and you dream. So we'll start with Zach. As you rest and you feel like your body's kind of light and you're very tired in your rest, you start to see um, visions, uh, very strange, um, and very familiar at the same time. And like the forest that you're in in this dream, it just feels familiar, uh, the same. And you see a bunch of individuals kind of moving about. Um, it would seem that in this dream, a force of several of Oltania Ruse's men is being led by a dwarf. And the dwarf um, wields um, one second here a very strange looking sword. Not unlike yours, but the blade appears to be made out of blood red metal. Not unlike Katsujin, but a very long sword. And a very traditional long sword, double bladed and the like. The uh, dwarf holds the blade aloft, kind of points towards a village, and as the vision kind of sways over to it, uh, you see that there are Altania Rus men who have been uh, crucified outside of this small village, kind of posted up there, and you see individuals inside of the village, tribal folk, um, some familiar to you, some faces that you know. And you watch as these new Altania Rus men move into the, the town and start butchering a lot of them. As that's happening, you see the dwarf kind of lift his head, his bright white beard, kind of shock white um, in this whole dark scene, uh, kind of raise his head and look up and say, All of those things, back to me. <laughs> And that's the end of your vision. Matt, you um, are asleep, snoring, not unlike a few minutes ago. Um, <laughs> Funny man. <laughs> you see what appears to be a borderlands town. Um, the styling appears to be a mix of Parnin and Seriujin styles. Uh, you can see that there are rice paper. Um, uh, doors and windows on the building that you're in or that you're seeing into and you see a woman come from the outside with a parasol shutting it closed 
and stepping inside. She wears a loose-fitting robe of some sort. Uh, I think you might have heard them being called kimono, a style of Seiryujin garb. A uh, fine-looking sash and just very ornate-looking attire. As she slips into it, she says something in a language you don't know, but strangely you understand what she's saying in this vision. She says, So, is it true what they say? The primordial has killed our blade in the west? Yes, milady, it is true. Well, I don't have time to be dealing with such rivalries. I have more important matters to attend to. Apparently, another member of these gangs is of importance to me now. She says this as she's fiddling with the hilt of a weapon. Ivory hilt. Appears to be fashioned in the shape of a woman. Um, and the blade, from what you can see as she pulls the weapon out of its sheath and drops it back in, appears to be bright red as well. The vision stops for you at that point. Then we go to Kevin, sleeping in your bed, quietly. You see a very busy, just brightly vibrant uh, tavern, just loud with song, music. Uh, it appears to be very similar to what you might have heard, you know, um, in Rastagar. Uh, very contemporary sounding music to you having lived here for a while. And a woman uh, slam dancing on the, uh, the bar top, wearing bright, vibrant colors and robes and attire. Um, and a number of different daggers about her on her uh, belt as well, um, and her sassers. She appears to be just a, a vision, lovely um, in every way. After a few moments of this, but you feel like she's been doing this for much longer than what you've seen, she drops down from the bar top and starts walking out of the tavern into the cold, fresh air. Uh, the breeze coming from the south coast. A drunken individual follows her behind and says, Yeah, well, you look tired. Maybe you need a bed. She turns to look at him and says, Oh, you're probably right, but you really don't have any chance with me at all. <laughs> he says, What's that? What do you mean by that? And in a flash, a blue sword erupts from somewhere um, and then erupts through him. No chance at all. The vision stops for you. Hmm. Joe, you see a very familiar um, kind of looking place deep inside of the mines of somewhere. A dwarvish place. Possibly Stormloft, you're not sure. Just dark. You see a very familiar looking style of axe up here. And your mind becomes racked with hate as you see that the axe that is in your vision is the blaze hatchet. The weapon of Durgan in the Black. The true weapon of the forebearer of your clan and you see it held on a belt just off to the side on someone's pack and gather uh, adornments this individual is wearing half plate full helm just walking about in the forest his fists his gauntleted fists are covered with blood and you can see bright red eyes shining inside of the full helm as he walks in this mine. Behind him, you think you can make out this familiar looking sign of chaos ensued in combat and the dead bodies he's left behind. Probably dwarves. Strange. You were told he was in the forest. How could he have gotten into these mines so quickly? These familiar looking mines so quickly. You start to realize why you recognize these halls. They were where you were raised. Your vision cuts. 
Tim. Your vision's simple. <laughs> it's not hard. You're watching yourself sleep in your dream. <laughs> you wake up thinking this is a strange dream to be having and when you wake up your vision is still watching you watch you sleep while you dream and it causes you to start and you wake up and you realize that you're waking up into a vision of you watching you sleeping you start to become very confused and kind of relax into this position of watching you sleep realizing that becoming anxious and you know, gathered about it is not working so you slip back and kind of watch as you do so your vision becomes shadowy and then it becomes completely apparent that you're in darkness but not alone you see Agatha surrounded by six swords floating around her and she says soon and your vision cuts Last, certainly not least, Andy, you see Shadow, standing with Grun on some very foreign and alien landscape. Lightning crackles off in the distances, and you see this just utter wasteland, jagged, torn apart. But off in the distance you see what seems to be a gleaming city, a massive gleaming city. Behind you, some distance away, there's a gate. Shadow looks to Grun. It went better than I expected. Didn't even see it coming. It took you all long enough to free me of my cage. It was he who sent you, was it not? The Goliath says. Shadow says. Aye, it was. It was indeed. About fucking time. So this is actually happening. The Dragon Queen is ready. They come for her now. They should be there within a few nights. I believe the Red One has a means of tracking her. After her display. Good. You're doing us a favor. And your vision cuts. I'm gonna have to explain what's going on. And that's where I'm gonna cut for the session. Thanks for watching. Next week, those of you who are interested, I'll be running a special Patreon only game. Uh, level 20 characters uh, will be um, inviting Matt to play along with us, and he will be revising the role of Zeldor. I believe I have a couple of people locked in for the game. I believe. Uh, Andy has yet to decide which character he'll be playing. He's got a couple of options. Kevin is in the same lot, is still trying to decide who he's going to pick. And of course, Andy, you get first pick because you've been a Patreon longer. Or patron longer. Uh, Joe, I'm kind of holding one aside for you, so you're welcome. <laughs> Andy! <laughs> Andy, <Adore>. play... <laughs> Andy, play Zelbor. He's obviously the best one. Play really? Zelbor. Yeah, everybody should play just a copy of Zelbor. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I believe it'll be God, a God, that'd be a fucking game. <laughs> yeah. All the Thymalgrums. So next week we'll be playing that game. And then the following week I believe we'll be taking off. If I run something, I'll probably broadcast it. So just keep an eye on your uh, notifications. And then we should be returning to this game on the 13th of September. <coughs> and the next... That level... Oh, uh, we'll get to that off screen. We never talk about experience okay. on screen. It's okay. not what we do. Um, but, uh, the... We don't play with experience. They don't know that. The next <laughs> arc, um, of 20 sessions, the next plot line, uh, will be called Souls and Swords. And, uh, we hope you join us for that. Should get us to 15th level, I think. Somewhere around there. And thanks for watching, and, uh, have a great night. Bye! Bye. Deuces.